What I'm about to tell you is completely a true story, no matter how much of it sounds like fiction. I want to share how the things you don't like about yourself are potentially the keys to unlocking your biggest dreams. How you may have gifts and superpowers that you don't know about, which are directly connected to your pain. And how this discovery helped me build a dream business, a dream life. And I want to share with you the step-by-step -step framework so you can build your dream as well. In the past 12 months, I've had the best year ever. In my business, I, I produced a movie called Dreamer that won three Emmy Awards. I moved into my dream house. I produced my biggest ever live event with thousands of people logging in from around the world. But most importantly, I've had the honor of impacting hundreds of thousands of people to dream bigger, to build their dreams, while giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars to various charities and touching the lives of millions. And today, my dream is not to only show you what's possible, but to give you the framework on building your dream, no matter what your circumstances. It's something I call the five pillars of dream building, and I'll share these pillars in a moment. The story begins when I was a child. I had two passions, movies and comic books. I dreamed of one day making movies, and I also dreamed of one day becoming a superhero, probably because I never felt like one. When I was 10, our school did IQ testing, and I scored really high. They labeled me as gifted. And you'd think that was a good thing, but it actually made me the victim of bullying. Suddenly, I was being bused to a different school once a week for gifted class. And every time I returned to my regular school, the kids bullied me for being too smart. I remember one day, a bunch of kids surrounded me. They threatened me and told me to stop doing so well on my tests. Apparently, I made them look bad. I was scared. I was hurt. I didn't know why they were treating me this way. And I, I learned to hate the word gifted. And it didn't get much better when I started collecting comic books at 14. Now, this is 30 years ago when you were called a nerd or a geek for doing that. And those words didn't have the positive meaning they have today. So I kept my love for superheroes a secret. And I idolized characters like Spider-Man and Iron Man and the Avengers. And then something really special happened. I discovered the X-Men. When I bought my very first X-Men comic book, I opened it to the first page and on it was a picture of something that said Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. There was that word gifted again, but this time it meant superpower. For the first time in years, being gifted was a good thing. X-Men helped me embrace myself. I would proudly tell my friends that when I grew up, I wanted to become a real life superhero and lead a team of superheroes like Professor X. And I was told, stop dreaming. But I never stopped. A few years later, at 16, my best friend and I started producing dance parties for teenagers. And at our very first event, we had a thousand people and it felt like a dream. We were doing something we loved and making money from it, complete bliss. And I remember coming home and sharing my elation with my parents and I was told, stop dreaming. But I never stopped. Another constant message from my parents and the adults and teachers in my, in my life were, get your head out of the clouds. Now, they wanted the best for me, and they wanted me to get a university degree and, you know, get a safe job with benefits. But as a dreamer, I learned that I am unemployable. I, I followed the direction of my parents and my teachers and my guidance counselors, and I uh, went to university. I got into the University of Toronto uh, coveted engineering program, but I didn't want to be an engineer, so I dropped out in second year. And that was the first time I felt deep anxiety and depression. And I thought that there was something wrong with me. A few years later, in 2002, I got married. And then in 2005, I had my son, Michael. And it was also the year that I left my last job to go full time into entrepreneurship and start my consulting business. And things seemed to be going well, but they weren't. And by the end of 2007, everything broke. My marriage ended. My business was failing. Uh, I felt like I was at rock bottom. I had a panic attack so severe that I called the ambulance because I thought I was having a heart attack and it got worse and worse and worse. And um, I became more numb and more hopeless. I clearly remember the date, March 27, 2008. I was sitting for three hours in a Quiznos, staring out the window and contemplating, should I end my life? I felt like I was already dead. And the one thing that kept me going was my son, Michael. I had become a single dad and had full custody of him, and I knew that I couldn't abandon him. And it was the turning point 
that changed everything in my life. It was my rebirth. And I started coaching again. And in 2009, it led me into the real estate business. And at the same time, in 2009, I had the spark of an idea, this thing called Archangel, that was like a real life X-Men school for the gifted. I, I remember sending an email to my mom telling her about this idea and her, her response was, you know, stick to real estate right now. It kind of felt like stop dreaming all over again, but it was good advice. And I did really, really well. And it gave me the chance to invest in my personal development and my professional development. And I rem remember one day in August of 2012, I was attending an event called Genius Network. And I had the honor of sitting at the nerd table. I was sitting with three of the smartest people on the planet. So Naveen Jain, who's a billionaire, who's sending rockets to the moon to mine minerals. Ray Kurzweil, who's the smartest person on the planet, I think. He's an inventor and futurist. And Peter Diamandis, the founder of XPRIZE. Now, these are three of the biggest dreamers on the planet. And I was so inspired at that event that on the plane ride home, I decided to launch my Archangel project. And in 2014, Archangel was born. And today we help thousands of dreamers to become change makers. And, you know, from people who have a dream of one day creating impact for others to those who are CEOs running eight and nine figure million dollar businesses uh, and helping millions of people. And because of our work, I've discovered five key pillars that allow people to shift from dreaming to becoming a change maker, to actually making the change happen and turning a dream into reality and maybe even potentially changing the world. And all five of these pillars start with the letter C. The first pillar is contribution. Now, the way to make a dream come true is to make it in service of others. The change you want to create has to be more beneficial to other people than it is for you. And sure, it's nice to have dreams of nice things and those dreams could be the byproduct of contribution dreams. It's a key to be in service to other people. And there's a quote from Zig Ziglar that I love. You can have everything in life you want if you just help other people get what they want. The best way to make your dream come true is to help other people make their dreams come true first. The second pillar is calling. Your calling, you know, your, your dream needs to be connected to what author Simon Sinek calls your why, the thing you were born to do, what some people may call their purpose, and what Joseph Campbell calls your bliss, the things you can't not do, what makes you feel alive, and something bigger than yourself, your North Star. Naveen Jain says, find something you're willing to die for and then go live for it. And on your journey from dreamer to change maker, there may be a lot of obstacles. There's going to be resistance. There's going to be challenges. And your calling will be the reason why you never give up and you keep going. The third pillar is curse. Your curse. So what is your curse? Your curse is actually your biggest gift. It's why I fell in love with the X-Men. So in the X-Men stories, the characters think they have a curse, something that they hate about them that makes them stand out, something that makes them different. They may get bullied or made fun of, and they try to hide it until the leader, Professor X, shows them that this curse is actually and truly a gift, and it may become a superpower that they can use to help other people. And I believe we are all gifted. Our gift is very much connected to our curse, the pain we felt in the past, the things that make us different or made us different, the things that make us stand out. One of my mentors, Philip McKernan, says that your gift is next to your wound and that often the change we want to create is to help other people avoid the pain that we've been through or maybe even fast track right through it. So think back to when you were young. What made you stand out? What did you get in trouble for? What made you different? All of these things are clues to your gift today. The fourth pillar is clarity. You, you have to have clarity around the change you want to make, clarity around your vision for a bigger future, clarity around the impact you want to create and where you want to go. And you have to be able to clearly communicate your dream to other people. Dreams become reality when the dreamer is able to inspire other people with their dream. You can't keep the dream inside you and you need to be able to talk about the change you want to create. The last pillar is community. So my friend Jason Gaynor says that the phrase self-made is very misleading. We are all community made. 
A big dream cannot be realized by one person. You need to surround yourself with people who believe in you, they believe in your dream, and they want to support your growth, and people who inspire you to dream bigger. In my experience, one of the biggest reasons people stop dreaming is that the, the people around them bring them down. Or you may be afraid of what people might think about you or what they might say about you. So if you want to build your dream, you have to build your dream team. You have to find a community of dreamers. Find a community of like-minded and like-hearted people that believe in you and believe what you believe. And I can attribute so much of my success to the community that I've built. And I was so inspired to dream bigger by surrounding myself by people who dream even bigger than me. John Lennon said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream and a dream you dream together is reality. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever stopped pursuing a dream because you were afraid of what people might think? What was that dream that you stopped pursuing? And how would you feel if you started taking one step towards that dream right now? 10 years ago, if I told someone that I was going to create a real life X-Men and lead a team of real life superheroes, helping millions of people changing the world, and making a movie like Dreamer that has won awards and getting the chance to meet people who play superheroes in movies and grow a multi-million dollar business that helps people dream bigger, they may have told me to stop dreaming, but I never stopped. And I feel like I'm just getting started. So I, I want to leave you with my biggest dream. It's something I call 10 billion smiles. In my lifetime, I dream of positively impacting every single human not directly, but indirectly through my Archangel community. I, I want to build a community of 100,000 dreamers and change makers who can each help 100,000 people. I want every single person to smile, to feel hope, to believe in themselves, to feel loved, to feel inspired, fulfilled, and connected not only to their dreams, but to each other. Most of all, I want you to smile. And never stop dreaming.